Welcome back to another review by Mega Train Lover. Today we are having a look at a Hornby model today, no prizes for guessing that. And you can probably tell from the picture in the box, but this is a X London Brighton and South Coast Railway Class A1X Terrier. And if we just bring the box up close, uh, you can see that this particular one is in the Southern Railway, uh, I think it's the, it's the olive green livery. And if we turn to the side, its product code is R3783. And it says DCC ready, but this has already been fitted with a decoder. And the loco is not actually in the box, it's been um, taken out, it's been given a run in. And I've also, de and I've, as mentioned, DCC'd it as well. Right, um, first I'll talk about a bit about the model itself. Then, um, then the history, and then we'll get on to the my actual model and look up close in detail. So this one here is the newly retooled version of the Terriers, which came out last year by Hornby. So basically, Hornby, um, well, Daypole used to make the um, the Terriers, and then uh, when Daypole was brought out, well, part of it was brought out by Hornby. Uh, Hornby carried on making the Terriers. They also carried on making other Daypole models such as the Great Western 1400s, the Austerities and the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Pugs. Now for, it, for its time that particular Terrier model was really really nice but over time it started to become more outdated and more outclassed by more recent um, developments in models. So Hornby took the decision to completely retool the Terriers and the example you see here is one of these completely retooled examples. And having owned the older Terrier before, um, I sold it recently because unfortunately the model, fortunately the mo unfortunately the model failed, so I had to sell it. Um, but basically, I can you know, basically remember what that one used to be like, and I can tell you this is much much better in terms of detail. But we'll get on to that in a second. Uh, if we turn to the back of the box. You can see you get tons of information about the Terriers, um, but I'll just um, explain to you the history as well. So the Class A1 Terriers were built um, were built at Brighton Works uh, for the London Brighton and South Coast Railway to the design of William Stroudley, and there were 50 of them built between 1872 and 1876, I think. Wait, well, 17, yeah, or somewhere around there. And they were built for work on London commuter trains. Uh, originally, they were classed as A1. I'll get on to slightly later why they, how they became A1Xs. So the A1s were built to basically um, uh, haul London suburban trains. They needed to be fast, or well, they needed to have uh, rapid acceleration, needed to be powerful, and the Terriers. Uh, basically fitted the bill until more powerful engines uh, replaced them uh, in the 1890s and they were relegated to uh, to sort of country rural branch lines and uh, lines in the countryside um, now the the nickname terriers were caught on early on uh, because the sound of their exhaust sounds like a dog barking so um, I mean officially they are obviously known as classes as class a ones but um, everyone just refers to them as, as terriers. It's just become a bit of a habit, really. Um, even I do so, so, yeah. Right, um, I mean, even after they were relegated to countryside, uh, several of them were sold to other other railway companies, such as the South Eastern and Chatham, London South Western, and also the Great Western Railway. Um, some of them were scrapped. But um, the ones which remained in service uh, for the London Brighton and South Coast Railway, they were um, they were put to work on motor train duty, so basically uh, push pull uh, push pull trains, and they became A1 X's in or the remaining most of the remaining ones uh, were rebuilt to the A1 X standard. Uh, they were rebuilt by Douglas Douglas Marsh. Uh, in about 1911, or maybe, no, it was Billington, it was Billington who was the chief mechanical engineer. Um, they were built around, nine, rebuilt around 1911 to 1913. Uh, they received slightly larger wheels, slightly larger boilers, uh, double coal capacity, and also slightly larger cylinders. So, all in all, they did look slightly larger than the A1s, not by much, but they, um, but they did improve the, um, the performance of the, of the class. 
The remaining examples, they all passed into the Southern Railway in, at the grouping in 1923, and then later on to British Railways at nationalisation in 1948. Uh, the reason why, the reason being for their long, for their long, um, uh, for their long, uh, long life, long, long lifespan, was because they were the only engines suitable for the Hailing Island branch. The Hailing Island branch had a very rickety old bridge, and the Terriers were basically the only engines suited uh, for the branch. Uh, it, was a, it was a very, very similar situation with the Adams, Adams radial tanks on the Lyme Regis branch. The reason why those were kept um, kept on for such a long time, for long afterwards, after the rest of the class had been withdrawn, purely because they were the only suitable engines for the branch. Eventually, the Terriers were, repla were completely withdrawn by 1963, which is when the Hailing Island branch closed. But amazingly, ten of them have been preserved. One of them is in Canada at the Canadian National Railway Museum. One of them is in the National Collection which is number uh, 82 Box Hill. And um, of course there's two examples on the Bluebell which, is, which are 55 Stepney, arguably the most famous member of the class, and also number 672 Fenchurch. And there's also other examples preserved um, across the country as well. Obviously um, there's 10 examples preserved in total. Uh, this particular example it's also preserved. This is number 2662 and its uh, original name was Martello and it's preserved at the Bressingham Steam Museum in Norfolk. So, uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to put the box to one side and the locomotive itself is right here. Wow. Wow. Just look at her. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, straight away, the level of detail is a vast improvement over the old Terrier, Hornby Terrier. Um, so, where do I start? Uh, let's start at the front. So, she's got a classic look of a Terrier. I mean, look at that. That is just so characteristic. Um, must point out, these discs, if it will focus, come on. Why is it not focusing? Gosh, there we go. These discs, um, I've added myself. They don't, uh, they don't, they don't come in the detail pack. I got this from another, uh, from another engine's detail pack, but I've added them for realism. Uh, one thing which I did first immediately notice that wasn't on the original Terrier are the lamp irons. The original Terrier didn't have them, uh, let alone these the extended lamp irons, which were quite characteristic with the LBSC R engines. You get um, you get NEM couplings on both front and back. The buffers are not sprung, which is a bit of a shame. But then again, uh, they can't really go backwards anywhere because the buffers are placed above the running board. But um, no, but I mean, to be honest, it lo looks really really nice. You get the number printed on the front very very nicely. You get the nice tall chimney, very characteristic of the Terriers. And for one thing I must point out, the running board is die cast. And it is quite heavy. For its size, it's not a big engine at all. I mean, look at it. It's, it's very small, actually. For its size, it's quite heavy. It's got good traction. Um, the body, the rest of the body um, feels, yeah, it feels, actually, no, the, no, the boiler feels die cast as well. But the running board is definitely die cast, which is really, really nice. You get all this detail, such as the handrails, the safety valves, and the whistle. Um, I think the whistle is actually made of brass. Um, but even if it isn't, it still looks very, very nice. You get the injector pipes, and the the lettering and numbering is very, very sharply applied as well. And the, you get the Westinghouse brake pump, which is, which actually looks like a proper brake pump. The original one just looked like a moulded piece of plastic. This one looks very, very nice. And look at the cab. That is a vast improvement over the old one. I mean, let's let's just focus. Let let it focus. Yep, there you go. So you can clearly see the regulator. You can also see the reverser and the brake. Yeah, I mean, all of that for su in such a small engine is really, really nice. You get the 
coal bunker. This is the later style coal bunker with the cult with the uh, the closed rails. And you get this. Uh, I'm not too sure what this. I think this is a toolbox at the back, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but obviously, this particular coal bunker was only added uh, when they were rebuilt to an A1X. Uh, Hornby also make the A1 version as well. They make many, many different versions of of this of this particular type ever since they re-released it. On the on the back, you get the separately fitted lamp irons. You even get the two extended lamp irons, which are really, really nice. You get the uh, the coal guards in the windows, and it's all and it's all flush glazing as well. Uh, just look at them. Just look how big the windows are. That is so very, very Victorian. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole engine is just bursting with character. Uh, all this brake rigging is uh, already pre-fitted. And I've just noticed, you can actually see, like on the real Terriers, you've got this sort of hole in the frames. That is so nice. Let's just fo let, let it focus for a second. Yep, yeah, there you go. Um, I think uh, the only criticism I might have is the crank pins are a bit oversized. Um... But uh, that could just be me. But, I don't know. but otherwise, the rest of the model just looks really, really nice. I'm just going to hold it for a second. Just to give you a good view of it. Yep, there you go. Absolutely beautiful. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put her, put her on the track and see how she performs. So here we have the Hornby Southern Railway Terrier on the track. And wow, well doesn't she look nice? Okay, I'm just going to select her number, which is number 43 in my case, and off she goes. And away she goes. So I've set it to about 18 on my Gage Master controller. But wow. Much she's a much better runner than my old Hornby Terrier. Much quieter, much smoother. Wow. Let's get a few uh, lines on shots. So just to conclude this video, if you're a Southern Region modeler, you have to buy her. She's a must-have. But all in all, I'd recommend her to any any speed enthusiast. This is a really, really nice model. Miles, miles ahead of the original Hornby Terrier. Absolutely beautiful. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.